Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was born on the 22nd of May 1859. He was a physician who became a writer most well known for creating the detective Sherlock Holmes, of course, and he lived for a time in Portsmouth. Now, an author who researched Conan Doyle's fiction and his connection with spiritualism would like to see a statue erected in his memory. Our reporter Shan Robbins went along to Southsea to find out some of Conan Doyle's historical links with the city. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle lived in Portsmouth for around eight years and wrote his very first Sherlock Holmes mystery while he lived in Southsea. Arthur Conan Doyle arrived in Portsmouth in 1882 on a steamer from Plymouth where he had fallen out with a doctor called George Butt. He landed here at Clarence Pier in Southsea and he had just £10 in his pocket and we know this because he wrote about it later in his book The Stark Munro Letters. He couldn't even afford to get a taxi to take his bags over to Old Portsmouth which is just a few hundred metres so he hired a porter to do the same for him. Uh, he got himself into a rental property there, he knocked down the price with the landlady and that evening he bought a map of South Sea and Portsmouth and looked at every street uh, of the town, of the growing town at the time and drew lines on the map, a route that he would follow which would enable him to walk every street of the town and there was a reason for this which is that he wanted to set up as a doctor and doctors could not advertise so he couldn't find out where they were unless he actually had sight of them and finally he found himself a place to stay and a place to set up and that's where we'll go next. It was at number one Bush Villas that Arthur Conan Doyle set up his practice as a young doctor. It's now been destroyed, uh, it was destroyed in the war and it's been replaced with flats, uh, but it was here that he struggled to get himself a foothold in the uh, life of the town. He couldn't even afford a servant, which at the time for a doctor was quite shameful, so he used to sneak out in the middle of the night and clean his own brass plaque in the dark so that nobody could see that it was him who was doing it. Um, and it was here also that as time went by he started to write. Whilst he was waiting for patients to come in, he would sit in the background, in the, in the back room, and he would write and he'd start to do his stories. Uh, one of which was the Sherlock Holmes story, uh, a study in Scarlet, which he started in 1886. Also around that time, he got into spiritualism. And these two things, spiritualism and Sherlock Holmes, were to have a huge influence on his life later on. Matthew's research suggests that while living in Southsea, Conan Doyle became more and more convinced of the truth of spiritualism. He was introduced to the ideas of it by a friend of his and he started to do uh, seances, he started to do various experiments including those in telepathy. Um, he came back to Southsea in 1919 after the end of World War I and it was here that something quite astonishing happened or so he believed. Uh, he'd given a talk at the Portland Hall, which is just over the road from where we are now, at St Jude's Church, and he retired to his hotel room and attended a seance. And it was there he became convinced that he spoke with and indeed touched his son, Kingsley, who had been killed the year before uh, in the Great War. This was a turning point. From here on in, there was utter commitment to this faith of spiritualism. And it's just extraordinary to think what a, an incredible influence Southsea and Portsmouth had on Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's life. This is Shan Robbins for That's Solent.